Hey everybody, sorry, this is, a, this is the continuation of the video about why parables and the tool that it used. Uh, sorry about that, but I tell you the truth. Between that time and the start of this video, because a, a friend was um, needed something from me, I uh, literally just went, what? Because like some new information just was like, boom, and I was like, no, like it was crazy, but let me continue from the second part. Oh wow, you guys, I cannot even comprehend how incredibly majestic God Almighty is. The Creator is amazingly brilliant. How incredible. He, Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you guys. He is the Son of Man. Christ the Lord. All, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh my goodness. I cannot even. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Wow. Please give me. Please, mercy. Patience. All right. Okay, so the continuation of the last video. Uh, I had ended on salvation is where there is hope. Right? And that's your last balustrade. And um, after that, you have hopelessness, right? And so that's your last chance. And there is all, there's still hope. It's not the final day. And so I was talking about the cognitive dissonance, the calcification, the premature programming, uh, uh, and projects, and what that really means, and put it all together, right? And then what it is with uh, percepts, and then the spiritual sense, and all that stuff, right? And uh, the, the final sentence is your final judgment. That's the period. That's your done, right? And it's only by your own words that you are judged for one. And then for two, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, so in this sense, in that whole structuring, right? That, would, that is kind of like um, how justice is your sentence. And it's final. Justice is good, yeah? Justification is justified, yeah, it's like justified and uh, just is discernment and understanding. That's what it is, sorry. So just is discernment and understanding, not wisdom and understanding, okay? Um, and discernment and understanding is wisdom. Where it comes into humility, wisdom feeds on patience, right? So wisdom feeds on the fruits of patience, the fruit of the spirit called patience, and it drinks the waters of humility. And humility, like I said, is a fertile soil, right? Um, think about this as the salvation, right? Because that's patience is the salvation. Sorry. Wisdom and humility and patience is the salvation of God. That's what it is. Patience of God is our salvation, right? And salvation, think about it, is the water of the spirit. Like saliva, it's a solution, it's solvable, right? Uh, like how we know solutions in the the real realistic sense, in the spiritual sense, like how my other video I said, like how we can see in the realistic sense air, you can't see it, it's all over you, but no one pays mind to it until it's not there, right? But you, we know it's there because you can suffocate. And that means you ran out of something that was invisible, you ran it out, right? So when I say like faith and willingness, they're, they are as real as air. But you need the right tools in order to amalgamate it inside of the real you, which is this body and the thing inside of you, which is behind that veil. And the only way that you can get that tool is to work on uncovering that veil. That is making it holy, poking holes in it because we're all spirit. But the more holes that you can poke in the veil, the more holy it can get. And then you can become, have a holy spirit. <gasps> Do you guys get it? Oh, shoot. So that's why it's called the Holy Spirit. And that's why we're all spirits and we all have that potential. But you need, you by your free will and willingness, you need to work on it. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Ava Adonai. Oh, so that right there. Uh, is the water, right? The salvation is the water of the spirit. And it says that the there's three things that the spirit uses in accord, and they all work in accordance. And it's the water, the blood, and the spirit. Yeah? So, 
Water, blood, and spirit makes a Holy Spirit. Christ, that spirit that worked its way throughout the Old Testament, like I told you who the Christ was, the, the angels of the Lord that was doing stuff, and I told you the ones that was there, right? He was the one that had stopped the hand of Ah. Uh, uh, Abraham killing Isaac, the angel stopped his hand, and then he was the one that, um, uh, oh, was in the fire with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, that was the same spirit, his name is Christ, okay, and then, uh, he was the hand, he was the one that closed the door of the ark, that was the Christ, so that was water, that was fire, and blood, blood, was the Lamb of God, Jesus, uh, water, wait, wait, sorry, Spirit of God, and that, yeah, the fire part is the Spirit of God, because he's a consuming fire, Christ is the water, um, and Jesus is the blood, the Lamb, right, the blood of Lamb, I haven't really, uh, anyway, beside the point, he was the hand that closed the Ark of the the door of the ark, of Noah's ark. He was in the fire with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. He was the hand that stopped uh, Abraham from killing Isaac. He And he was the Word made flesh, the Word of God. So in the beginning was the Word, right? And when God was creating, he created, 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 and then he said, it is good. That breath of God is called Christ, okay? That was the breath of God, and it is of the water. And in the beginning, the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. Oh! Wow! <laughs> do you guys see how amazing this is? If you can do this accordingly, and I, I've done it. I, I done it. Let that be a testimony. That that's the anointing. It it just teaches you. It just comes to you, and it's like, and then you're just like, what? Like it's so. Cr <gasps> okay, so with this roundabout. Okay, we're getting into the deeper darkness. The rock. The rock. The tomb, the rock of the tomb, right? Do not harden your hearts right now if you hear his voice calling. Don't harden your hearts. Go to it. If you have been doing something over and over again, and that's how you lived and it was comfortable, right? And then you hear something else, and you don't, you don't have the correct discernment to know or feel um, uh if you should wander there or there's too many false prophets all over the place that you don't know who to trust with this age of technology that has people who record stuff and they keep their recordings yeah look through their past videos and see if one that they know they have made certain in their what they're saying and according everything together in perfect harmony um, of this new information that could def could or might possibly feed you more um, if they have proclaimed many times just in their regular talks how Jesus was a man that died 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 and then how that accorded they have to proclaim that Jesus Christ was a man and he was God that is one thing for you guys as the anointing yeah because or for everyone else sorry my bad but for everybody really so that's one key to look at and then two, look at the fruits that they produce. Is Are they going over the same thing that everyone else keeps saying? Or is it going to give you uh, enough faith to, and trust inside of a person to go with them on their journey and see what they have left behind, the, the little crumb trails, and see if it can feed you because then that would be your salvation that's going to be the water that is going to hit that rock the water is going to split the rock and it's going to have the water gushing out the rock again and then you're going to have again once again ability to keep going once you once you reread the parables in that new sense of the water coming out of that rock get it do you guys get it and that is going to 
always generate in you the gain. He who has little will continue, right? And he who has more will be given even more. That's what the parables are, right? Like I told, like I said, um, it determines the amount of righteousness developed in the Holy Spirit. Um, so, uh, parables, uh, so, uh, sorry. You have, um, he who has little has, where are we? Sorry. Oh yeah. It is measured unto you and even more and more, Right. Uh, by the measures that you use and th that what that is is it's giving you more measures of your own Holy Spirit so if it's justified accordingly f listen to the Creator use that Holy Spirit off of the vine practice that that's called faith okay it's like a fledgling uh, it's like uh, Say, you know what a fledgling is, right? It's a bird that's just about to learn how to fly and it has the wings, but it's like scared, it's like high up, and it's like lots of times they'll go and they'll just drop down, they have to climb back up the tree, right? But that is what makes, generates that faith. Faith is a strong thing, just like air. You need the faith fulfilled. I have videos in mind that uh, you can listen to and hopefully it has that recognition resonance but like I said I'm not looking I'm not making a gathering I'm not a leader I could be a leader and I'm not a prophet I could be a prophet I am a child of God from the kingdom of heaven with the overview kind of thing and what I do is I help whoever comes along because I have the infinite amount of bread I can keep throwing out because um, my father because uh, I am a child of God and that's just how it it is you know and um, what it is is like if this rings true to you and you like it you know whoever you are following you know send them over here and then I can give them they can have my information I don't care I don't you can say you're you can say you're the one you made who made it up like I thought of this and I figured out that's all this stuff. you can have it you can have all the glory I have enough and more and whatever the case may be this is all in truth. It's not for gain of me. It is for the glory of my father because he's awesome. And, like our father is awesome, you guys. This is all for him and because I understand now why he did it for the entirety of the world. You guys need to know this. You guys need to feel this. Get out of that discrimination of what the, what the religious culture has indoctrinated, right? And these are the people who's, who don't like religion because of the indoctrination and that culture and that classification. And that, I, me too. It stinks. That's stupid. That's like the poop and caca. Like, throw that away and go tr just read the Bible. Just read the... If you want to read something really cool, read the Bible. And if you don't know where to start, let me know. And I was tell you I haven't read the whole Bible either but I'll tell you where I started and where I started was just enough just to keep it going because if you even if you have a little bit you would just be gaining more and it says the kingdom of God is like the smallest little seed and if it gets planted like a small little mustard seed it would just continue and growing and growing and you don't even know how like if you're, I'm, you're not even you're thinking about it but you're not really thinking about it but it's, it's growing inside of you and then all of a sudden it's like oh and then you it would keep growing until it's so big the biggest tree that has ever been there and it will provide shade and everything that's how the kingdom of God the kingdom of God is like a small like uh, a man who uncovered something like a treasure in the land right but then he what he did was he buried it again then he went and sold all his stuff and they came back and bought that land because now not only was that land not valuable you thought it wasn't valuable right but when you uncovered it and found that treasure and was like oh you knew that that land now had immense value more value than the entirety of the world that one little plot of land and what you did was then went and sold all of the world like I'm gonna sell all my stuff which is like deny yourself in the world and then go back to that land and buy it and then go in there because you need as much room as you possibly can because you have a little seed in you that's gonna be so big the universe cannot contain it that's why I, I don't even know where the word omniverse came from. 
that's just I was just like omniverse and like it makes sense. We know what omni omni is and then the like, universe uni and then omni. I don't know. You know what I mean? So like the, that right there is a example of tongues. That is the language of angels. Okay. Like anyway, what's that the point? Do you see how awesome this is? Okay. So uh, go on that and see if it. Or sorry, send your leader to these videos and or get in touch with me and what I'll do is I'll he can we will talk and then he'll be able to feel my Holy Spirit like that it's in truth like I'm in truth and then he can have new flavor he could be the new salt of the world because it has become bland what goes into the mouth and it used to be so much honey and so sweet has become bitter in the stomach people don't like it that's why they're thro throwing it and thrashing it and not even wanting it anymore yeah but if you become the if you become the new flavor of the world how does salt that loses its saltiness gain flavor and it says question mark then it says it it's useless it gets tossed and trampled but i know how it's through fire it's through fire a refining fire that's why and if you can get that mo at the the spirit which is like a fire yeah it will generate that passion and that heat and that it, more because then you're feeding more to the the flock and congregations that you have worked so hard to as a leader um and they know your call and your voice and then from there you will see your if you have a congested uh huge group it will break apart people aren't going aren't to be wanting that um the new salt yeah and they'll wander away and you'll see smaller 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 which is perfect because they're not being lost to the world that's just not their place yeah and you're not failing you are accomplishing because look at what our father did when jesus went through he had a lot of people and then he said said things at first Lots of people was like, wow, wonder, wonder, wonder. And then he said something else. And then they're like, oh, no. And then he said something else. And they're like, oh, no. And then after all of a sudden, what had had to have like, uh, how are we going to feed these 5,000 people with five, you know, five loaves of bread and two fishes and whatever. And they, of course, they did to the last and final supper where there's only like one table with like 12 people. Do you see how it said? And it was perfect, perfect, because out of those 12 people, came everybody in this world right now and like we're seeing on the media and stuff oh there's billions and billions of people there's too many and they all came they all have the salvation they all have the ability to get that they because there's still hope hope is the like i said for real but it's hard to kill and what i just learned okay so i'm going to share with you my what okay so um, remember I was talking to the, the other video, video, sorry, and I was like, so your percepts and then you have a veil, like a curtain, right? Like a veil, and then uh, you have to poke holes in it kind of like to make it a Holy Spirit because the Spirit is inside. And then if you can do that, all that stuff. Um, I had just like, my friend was like, blah, blah, blah. So I closed the door and then I, I don't know how it even happened. Like, did I just open the Bible? I think I just opened it, okay? And it was... Ah, uh, <laughs> Hebrews 19.20, okay? As anchor for the soul, firm and secure, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Jesus went before and entered on our behalf, and this is the tent. Oh, I'm uh, sorry, and our behalf, and then this is the part that I was like, and this is the tent covering um, of the, of that, I was saying that Christ needs to, he's the cover of the tent because glory is a light that is just, so immense if you uh, aren't uh, gracefully brought into it and merged uh, it would just destroy you it would just b like blow you up it's so hot it's hot it's an all-consuming hotness but it's not even alive it's just that's what it is right and so that's but this right here as anchor for the soul okay the when I was talking about the the percepts and then the the it's veiled it, there's a curtain you got to poke holes in it right this is what has happened to me anchor for the soul Jesus had it was already uh, uh the seed of the like uh the child of God I'm a child of God that's why I know this uh, you know I know this I'm not just talking out my butt um he went in before and he anchored and guess what it said. It was the anger for the soul in the sanctuary. 
it's the hope. It can never be moved from my heart. That means the last balustrade, no matter what, I will always have hope. That right there is called everlasting life. Truth is truth, you guys. Wow. I am like on electricity right now. Wow. Thank you, Lord. My father's amazing. You guys, our father's so amazing. You have no idea. He's just worthy of everything and so humble. And so graceful. <sighs> okay, so. Wow. Everlasting life. <laughs> I, I was just saying in my other video. I feel like you could go on forever and ever. That's like everlasting life. <laughs> you guys, this is the sense of the first fruits. This is the time you can do this. That's what I was saying in the other videos. And this is just. It just confirmed it. <laughs> Okay, so today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart, the tomb. After the resurrection, the, who rolled away the tomb? There was an angel of the Lord outside of there. And I know who that angel was. It wasn't Christ because Christ was now son of man. There was another angel that came up. Yes, I know who that other angel was. The angel that said, oh, he has risen, haven't he? Hasn't, haven't you? Hasn't he told you? But I'm not going to tell you right now. I the, uh, <laughs> I feel like uh, I want to, but then something else, I also feel like, uh, not right now. Wow, yes. I know who that angel was. Okay, so, but right now, like, the hand of Christ had closed the ark. Uh, the hand of, uh, when today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Because right now is the time of that deeper, deeper darkness, okay? And so in this sense, the stone, the rock, right? Um, if, it, if, you cannot, if you can remove the hardness from your heart and have a little bit of light into that darkness and you cannot, you know, going into a dark room from a bright outside that you ha your eyes adjust, yeah? But you're going to a tomb expecting a body. But... What, it, how, how did the rock, who's this guy t t saying this and, you know, what you do is the darkness that there's no body. There's no body, but the light shines in the darkness. Get it? There's no body. But if you don't, if you don't remove that rock, the pride, yeah, then not only do you not know if there is or is there, there has been no resurrection. It's darkness, darkness, darkness. There's no way the light has even gotten in there. There's no penetration in there. There's nothing in there, you guys. That's what it means. So don't. So if today you hear his voice, don't harden your heart again. Because right now, the hand of God is moving. It can move that boulder. It can move the rock. It can. That's the rock of your salvation. It's the entrance to that tomb. We're going into the deeper darkness that looks like the light. We don't know what that light looks like because it looks exactly like it. It's an imitator. And the deeper we go in, just like the mark of Jonah, the sign of Jonah that everyone has known about. But now I'm telling you the the final picture of the puzzle that is really, really uh, the, the root of truth um, to all the sub little sub roots that everyone was claiming and putting all these things together is that deeper darkness coming up, putting it you in yourself so far, so, so, so darkness, darkness, darkness. If that, if that rock is not pro, if that pride is not moved out, you, that rock has never been moved and there's only darkness, darkness, dark. Do you see how it all connects? I, and I just, thought of this after that like that's that's why okay so free will is still yours determining growth levels and gain using the parables for yourself yeah when you read it again 
You have to think back about when we were little kids. We watched The Lion King, we watched Aladdin, we watched Beauty and the Beast, right? And as a little kid, you watched it and you know how you feel and you know how little kids feel when they watch it. It's awesome. But then growing up, with the maturity of the mind, you can watch the same cartoon and there's more things that you're like, oh, okay, that right there is the same basic principle of the parables, okay? You read it as a little kid or you read it before you started. If you had maintained your growth and reread it again, there's going to be more that feeds you because it's, in my other videos, I said this, it's an omnidimensional truth, right? It will go out throughout anything, any dimension, any level and work for anyone who can read it to see it certain things. If you can read a parable and tell me your answer, you will reveal yourself to me kind of thing, right? And so, but the Lion King, after when you're grown up, you realize that Simba killed Mufasa. Not on his own accord. Simba was innocent, but the law of attraction. And right before uh, Mufasa had died, right, he had been singing, I just can't wait to be king. And what happened? He had everybody singing it, so they were drawing it, drawing it, drawing it. And the only way that a, li a prince can be a king is if the king died and the throne was open. And that's what had happened. But he was innocent because uh, Scar, who was the, the one who was ma the manipulator, right? He is the one who came and he, uh, he went on the innocence of the free will of Simba. Do you see what I'm saying? So it wasn't Simba's fault, but because Simba did that, it was, it was as it is. Mufasa died. And that is, as a little kid, you didn't think like that. But now, now you can see it, right? Aladdin, when he was flipping around, he's like, one jump ahead. And then that fat girl was like, still, I think he's rather tasty, right? That funny, funny part. The reason why they, that lady who tried to hit him with a broom inside of there, was mad is because one he's poor yeah he has no money and he's uh, sneaking in there and that's a brothel yeah all those girls were prostitutes and he would go in there and do his thing <laughs> and that's why he was mad but you can you didn't see that when you was a little kid you just thought it was awesome right and singing dancing and the fat girl singing that and you're like it laughing now you can see it as an adult that is what parables do they show you maturity in spirit and then beauty and the beast yeah you like look at that whole thing and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, you understand it as a little kid. But then you grow up and then you're like, oh yeah, Belle was a gold digger. Like, hello. She was from this small little cottage and she's all poor. She follows and she goes to this huge, dark and scary castle, opens the door, sees like all this crazy, dark, scary things. And the first thing she thought was, this guy has money. <laughs> And she didn't care if it was a beast. She was like, yes. <laughs> so do you see how it works? That is the same process that parables do for the spirit. That's what I'm saying. It will measure your level. And um, uh, think about the cognitive dissonance, right? That imitator and the imitation. And if you're in the correct light, the wrong light, and the people who don't know the correct way to do it, yeah? They're the ones who's going to be very prided and they're just like, no, I don't believe in that stuff. They haven't fed their spirit enough. Um, the same concept, the little mermaid, okay? Do you remember when Prince Eric went into that trance? Because Ari Ariel, even though she didn't have a voice, almost had, they almost kissed. And then Ursula got desperate made Flotsam and Jetsam flip that boat over, and then she was just like, that little tramp, she was good, better than I thought. And Ursula had to go through desperate measures. She had to put the voice inside of her and then put Prince Eric under a charm and almost get married and go, go through desperate measures like that, yeah? And there was everything looked the same to Eric, but what was the one big significant difference that everyone could have seen, that anyone could have seen, even though... Uh, Ursula and the Little Mermaid, Ursula didn't make herself look like the imitation, right? But she made herself almost pretty, but the same voice. That hair, Ariel's hair was super red, and Ursula's it was jet black. It was like a contrast, right? Do you see how it works? That's cognitive dissonance right there. You don't even know what's really going on, but you feel like you are a prince and you were just like I am making it in life but that's not what life is you're going into that the tomb where there's no the, no one had rolled it away there's only darkness dark darkness, darkness there's no way the light can penetrate in so don't harden your heart yeah um 
if you hear his voice calling, just go to it. It's fine, you know? That's what it's there for. And practice the faith, uh, being faithful. Practice letting go of the world. And it is scary. Like the fledgling. Oh, like, sorry. Like that, I was talking about the fledgling. You flap your wings, um, you fall down, you have to climb back up the tree and then do it again, right? But that's what having faithfulness to that justified level is like, okay? You need to go past your comfortability. The cave you fear to enter is where your treasure lies, okay? The, the cliff you fear to jump off of is where your fine your is not going to be your final breath. It's not a plunge before to your death. It is all the air that you could possibly have and will never end. Yeah. A uh, bottomless pit is just darkness, 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 darkness. Can you imagine just being in darkness? Think about this. A bottomless pit. If you hit the bottom, and you were just in darkness and darkness and darkness. Do you not understand that you would still, you wouldn't understand, you wouldn't f be able to realize if you were falling, yeah? Like all your percepts would go crazy. So after a while, if you kept falling in a bottomless pit, I should say, we know what ground feels like, but if you kept falling, falling, falling in total darkness, your, the air would feel like ground eventually and that's what you would do and then what if you were actually on ground later on and you didn't even know it like you, did, you didn't crash down or something you know what I'm saying like you wouldn't know the difference if you were in air in a bottomless pit or just like in a room just like oh yeah I'm just falling like because it's all dark that's what I'm saying it's crazy um yeah, so that's that. That's that's the end of that video. Sorry, I went on a rant. There was just so much stuff. I, w I was going to go on just that until I got interrupted. And then just my world just changed, you guys. So I hope these videos help you. And I know they will. There's going to be a recognition resonance. There's still hope. There's always going to be hope until the end. So I'm going to keep doing these videos like I promised at the beginning. And then, like, like I said, I'm a baby. Like I just started all this. I'm not conventional at all. I haven't gone to church in 20 years. I don't, I'm not part of any group. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a believer. I'm not a spiritualist. I am a child of God from the kingdom of heaven. And I have been at, and worship at my father's feet and uh, fall in love more and more daily. I don't know how much more I get fall in love. Like, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. And the anointing, know that it is real. And let me, let this video just be thriving proof because I just, in front of you, uh, for testament, just under, just was justified. My justice. The justice was, I have... I am, I have everlasting life. <laughs> and it's possible. If I can do it, you can do it. That's what I'm saying. Put away your prejudice about what the religious cultural sense, that's what the world did. And they made it stink. The world stinks. The world is like the illusion stinks. Yeah. It's fun for a little while, but then it gets boring. And uh, the Bible, don't think about it that it's in a culture. The Bible is the bound and put together, yeah, bibliography, which is man-made of the Word of God, okay, written down. And the word, the, the written word kills the spirit, yeah, it kills it. That's why you've got to talk to each other so you could see the eye and hear the tone and see the movement and you can then tell the excuse me, <laughs> the emotional state. This right here, the Bible, that is a man-made thing, yes, but it there is still a little bit of flavor in there. And if you want to, if you want to continue on, I'm telling you, that, just trust it. Throw away your prejudice about it. It's not because you, do, you don't have to call yourself a Christian. You don't have to call yourself, you can call yourself worldly. Just read it like you would read anything else. And I know that there's a lot of a lot of different books, but if you want to start that journey, 
let me know because I'll right now the rest of the world whoever you are if you don't have to be a Christian you don't have to to believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You don't have to be justified like that. You don't have to be a Jew or an Israel from the old faith and do all that stuff. You don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is learn how to love. That law of love will give you enough salvation so that you can continue on with everyone. As the end grows closer, that's why the Bible was made like that, where it would end <laughs> on the law of love. Um... Because you, even though you might be the least in the kingdom, like how I am right now, I'm just like a little baby. I have, like, I'm helpless, literally. I'm just watching and teachers, I don't, that's what, that's like the metaphor that I use. I, it's not like I'm looking at something and I'm watching, but I really feel like a little baby, just like a little baby, happy. And um, you're just going to be like a little baby. That's all kind of thing. And you will have then the chance because the seed has been planted from this period, this end, this blood moon with the Mars, the period of this into the something else coming up, like the final, yeah? And then you can begin the next life and how amazing would it be for you, yeah? It's just love never fails. That's all it is, yeah? And love is patient, it's kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking. It does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres, and love never fails. That's just the law of love. And if you can try to just register some of that in the way that you live as a good person, yeah? Salvation can still be a little bit in you and it'll be okay. And the rest of the world, God wants everybody. That's what he, he even says in there, God so loved the world. Anyway, and I'm not a missionary and I'm not a Christian being like, oh, you have to only believe in this. I'm preaching the law of love, which is universal. God is love. But let me tell you this. If I had to know love or know God, I would know love because God is just a name. You understand? So know that I am... I am Kanegi. I am. There's no discrimination in me, and I will figure out a way if you uh, are willing. So, I hope everybody enjoyed that. I really did. Thanks for sharing that awesome moment with me. Take care. <laughs>